So in this video, what we're going to do is put the camshaft and the lifters in on this uh, 1.8T AEB engine head. So to get started, what we're going to do is put the lifters in. These, those are what pushes the valve down. It uh, attaches to the valve stem right here, and that's what actually the camshaft will push down, and that's what activates the valves. So we have these all numbered whenever we took them out, and we know that one starts on this side and goes out. So let's go ahead and start putting these in. But whenever we put these in, what we're going to do is take a little bit of assembly lube and put these on the parts. You could just put uh, brand new motor oil. We just wanna make sure that whenever this engine starts for the first time, all the oil is drained out of here. And when it starts, it wouldn't have any oil. We don't want the engine to get damaged. So what we're gonna do is make sure this has oil whenever it starts. So with this assembly lube, let's put some on. Just kind of smear it around and drop it in place, just like that. Now with all the lifters in place, it's time to go ahead and put the camshaft in. But what I'm going to do now is just take some of the assembly lube and put it where the camshaft is going to be sitting, right there. So it'll glide smoothly and it won't grind. So we want to make sure we have plenty of grease there. Just like that. Now that we have all the grease in place, I'm going to go ahead and put the camshafts in place. This one sits right there, and this one sits right in here. You wanna make sure that these seals here are new and fresh. We know for certain that these are good seals, but what can happen if, if these camshaft seals start leaking, the oil can start leaking out onto the timing belt itself, and that'll soften it and then it'll break. We actually had that happen on the timing belt before, so what we're gonna do is make sure we have good seals on here and we know these are good seals. Now for the pieces that hold the camshaft in, whenever we took them off, we laid them out in the same order that they came off. So we can go ahead and start to put these back in. I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna torque them yet. I'm just gonna put these on. And this is actually going to be how we're going to get the timing correct on these two camshafts. On these two pieces here, you can see this one has an arrow, and so does this one. This one also has an arrow. And then on the gears here, there's a mark, and you line that mark up with the arrow, and then you know the timing is correct. Right here on the top of the gear, you can see that there's a mark. That's the mark we're gonna line this piece up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this lightly in place. Just kinda put it on by hand. And if we look at this now, you can see that that and that are just about lined up. This one is turned just a little bit, but that's going to correct whenever we tighten this down, because when you tighten that down, this is gonna pull in a little bit. So I lined up these two gears here with the timing marks as best as I could, and then I added all of the, um, the camp holders to put in the, to hold on the camshaft. Whenever I put them all together and tighten them where it's all set into place, if you look at this timing mark, you can see that is pointing to one right there. And if you get a little bit more of a shot coming straight down, you can see that they're not aligned how they should be. This one should be over just a little bit more. It should be centered. So I have this one tooth off, but this one over here is good. That's where I want it. And it's kind of tricky to tell because whenever you take these off, the two camshafts pull together because of the tensioner trying to pull them together. So you really can only tell whenever you take all these off. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these, take all these off again and just move this over one tooth and then put them all back on. And then theoretically it should be in time. So now we, need, we know that this camshaft needs to spin this way 
one tooth to get it in time. So right now you can see it doesn't look like that's where it needs to spin just because see how this camshaft is popped out. So really you can only get a true reading of where these marks are whenever they're fully pressed down with those holders. But I know I need to spin this one tooth. It can be a little tricky, but I'm just gonna lift the camshaft up. Just like, it can be a little tricky. Right, just like that, there we go. So that was one tooth. Now let's go ahead and put all the cam holders back on. So now I have all the lifters in, they're just tightened, hand tight the ratchet. And I, I didn't tighten them with the drill, I just got that to move them in, you know, the half inch that the threads had to go. And then I really, whenever I tighten them, it's important you tighten the camshafts carefully. You don't wanna tighten this one, tighten this one, and just go down and tighten them like that. Cause then your camshaft is gonna bend up like that. It's important that you don't snap your camshafts. This is cast iron, it's brittle, and it's easy to snap. If you tighten them in the wrong order, then you'll snap them. So what I'm doing is tightening them, kind of like whenever you tighten a wheel. You tighten it where it seats on, and you tighten it evenly. So I went through and I tightened it, and I wanted it to go down even. I didn't want it to go down like this. We're gonna torque these camshaft bearing caps to about seven and a half foot pounds and we're gonna start torquing them from the outside in because of course you don't wanna start torquing them from one side and move across because the camshaft is gonna start bending up and you might even snap it. So it's very important you torque it right. Camshafts aren't cheap and they're made out of cast iron so they're brittle, you don't wanna snap them. We're gonna use this electronic torque wrench we got from Harbor Freight. We've used it um, before and it does a great job. I have it set to seven and a half foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through and torque these from the inside or from the outside in. So I'm gonna start on this side and start torquing these up. The way this torque wrench works is whenever you turn it, it'll make a beeping sound, but it'll be a intermittent beep. That means it's about 80% of the way there, but then whenever it does a solid beep, that means you are fully at the correct torque. One way to make sure your camshafts are correctly in time with each other is these two timing marks. There's one right here, you can see there's an arrow pointing to the notch on the gear. And then on the other side, there's the same thing. We have both of those lined up. But if you wanna just double check, have peace of mind, you can count the number of pins going between the two links. We'll start here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 is the correct amount of links that should be between these. So that's just another way you can verify that you know you have it right. Now we're gonna put the camshaft position sensor on. There's just two bolts that hold it on. We'll thread these in and then we'll torque these to seven foot pounds each. Now we'll go ahead and torque these to the correct torque, which is seven foot pounds. Right there and this is torqued and in place so now the head is fully assembled it's ready to go back on the car it's got new valves and new seals it's everything's back together torqued up and ready to go back on the car